Go ahead and talk for a moment. Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, I'm Richard Fields on the show this evening. Jason McPhee, engineer for the state of California. Loria, uh, Loria, <laughs> <Lorea. laughs> get that right, uh, is a, a poet and uh, the, uh, the editor of Minute.com as well as uh, a uh, financial advisor here in Sacramento. And I, you know, I, I think perhaps that the first 10 minutes of the show got cut out due to technical difficulties. So we're just going to kind of start over again uh, where we uh, where we uh, left off, which was uh, talking about the uh, Roy Moore Senate race in Alabama. Roy Moore is the uh, notorious uh, Supreme Court judge. Got kicked off the uh, court twice for uh, a couple of different. Uh, well, once for. Uh, refusing to remove a statue uh, of the Ten Commandments under court order, and second for uh, refusing to allow uh, local Alabama officials to grant marriage licenses to uh, gay couples, even though the Supreme Court had ruled that gay marriage was in fact uh, legal. Uh, so he ran uh, in, a, in a primary to replace uh, Jeff, Jeff Sessions when Je Sessions was appointed as uh, Attorney General. He won, and uh, once he won, uh, he's gone into a general election against a Democrat. The Democrat is an interesting guy. He's the guy that won, uh, eventually won a conviction against some Ku Klux Klan members for the 16th Street uh, bombings back in the, back in the Civil Rights era. Uh, back in the 60s or 70s, 60s I think it was. So anyway, it's an interesting race, but what's made it really interesting is that uh, the, uh, the judge, Roy Moore, has been charged by I think five or seven or something like that, uh, women who said that he, was, uh, he, he made inappropriate sexual advances to them while they were teenagers and he was 30 years old and a, uh, uh, a, a DA in, in Gadsden, Alabama. Um, so an interesting race, but it's even more interesting because Ron Bishop is running as a write-in candidate. The Republicans are trying to get Roy Moore to uh, withdraw from the race. Uh, Majority Leader McConnell, uh, Richard Shelby, the senior senator from Alabama, and a whole bunch of other Republicans have circled, the, you know, have set up the circular filing, 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 firing squad uh, and aimed it at, at uh, Roy Moore saying, we don't want him in the Senate. If he wins, we'll expel him. Uh, and of course, it's too late to get a new Republican except as a write-in. Well, we've got news for the Republicans. We've got news for the Democrats. We've got a write-in candidate. His name is Ron Bishop. And he's a libertarian. And he's a libertarian and a damn good one. Been running a very strong campaign for, uh, for several months now. Well, you know, uh, the libertarians are, um, uh, have, are, are appealing to Republicans uh, about 50%. So on things like gun control, for instance, the libertarian is appealing, you know, to the um, to the deep South Republican. Uh, on some of the social issues, uh, legalization of marijuana, uh, legalization of gay marriage, those kinds of things, perhaps not. And uh, you know, he might appeal to the Democrats in Alabama. There are a few. You know, uh, at the very least, it appears that the controversy is going to make uh, is going to give him a lot of visibility. And we're starting to see now that uh, that vis uh, where that visibility happens, both Democrats and Republicans move will move. The independents will move to the Libertarian Party. So whether he wins the election is one thing, but he's certainly going to get a lot of airtime here over the next uh, next couple of weeks. The Justice Department has uh, basically forced RT, the, uh, uh, the used to be Russia Today, the uh, cable network. Uh, owned by the Russian government and operating in Washington, D.C. Uh, as a cable news network, uh, has forced them to register as a foreign agent. Uh, free, free speech, First Amendment problem, anybody? Uh, yeah, hey, it's, uh, you know, where to begin. Uh, you know, if, if you're going to start labeling the media as foreign agents, uh, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, Al Jazeera, BBC, where do we stop? Uh, so, uh, to me, this seems rather silly. Uh, you know, we have a, a network that essentially is giving voice to alternative views. In fact, that's where Gary Johnson has, has had a lot of uh, interviews and even had a debate uh, when he couldn't get on the stage with the uh, national debate because of the monopoly between the Republican Democrat Party. So, um, you know, it just seems rather ham handed of the, this whole Russian scare to be going after the one network named Russian TV. <laughs> Well, and I think that the U.S. for freedom of the press is now ranked something like number 46th or 47th in the world. Uh, I mentioned Al Jazeera, uh, who made a huge investment in America, 
and uh, pulled out. Uh, so there is no Al Jazeera America anymore uh, for these very same reasons. Uh, and so, you know, people that think that we value free speech in this country are sadly mistaken at this point. Well, of course, this is all part of the fallout from the, uh, the alleged uh, interference in the uh, 2016 elections by the Russians. Uh, it appears the Russians were just causing trouble for both Democrats and Republicans, but the uh, media narrative has been that uh, that the, he was somehow that the Russia was somehow backing Trump, and uh, with investigations and you know a special counsel investigating it and the whole nine yards. Um, and the interesting thing there is that the Trump administration, I mean, you know, it's the Trump administration that's doing this. Sessions is the AG, and he's the guy, it's the Attorney General's office, the Justice Department, that uh, essentially told RT that if you don't get, uh, don't register as a foreign agent, your executives in the United States will be subject to arrest, your bank accounts will be impounded, you will be out of business. So it was basically blackmail or, or extortion that forced him to register as a foreign agent. But it's being done by the supposedly Russia-friendly Trump administration. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and Sessions, and we were talking about, you know, the Alabama thing, one of the things they're trying to, the Republicans are trying to do is get Sessions to go back to being a senator in Alabama, like they think if he goes down there, because Sessions from day one has been a problem for Trump. And uh, he turned out to be, he was, he was put in his position to, to get the South. Uh, uh, Trump is not really a Southern guy with Southern values, you might say. And so the solution to two problems is to get Sessions out of justice and get him back into Alabama where he can vote Republican. And, and but Sessions doesn't seem to be interested. He does not seem to be. We'll see. Uh, the uh, interesting thing about this whole Russia thing is, you know, we complain and find a Russian under every bed. Meantime, from 19, from the world, from World War II era until until the, until 2000, we, the United States, were involved in trying to affect the results. I think I think it's 90 some elections in foreign countries. One out of nine contested elections in foreign countries, we were involved in either the CIA or uh, other uh, uh, shadowy agencies in the United States. Well, not, not even just affecting elections, but actually installing dictators in some places, like when we had the Shah of Iran. I mean, we were implicit in, 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 in installing that guy over there. So the idea that, you know, it, it seems like such a, a farce to sit there and say, oh my gosh, this is happening here, when we've clearly been doing this to a lot of other places in the world. It seems the first thing we should do is step back and make sure our hands are clean before we start lecturing everybody else. Well, and certainly, the idea of freedom of the press, free speech, is that if one voice is wrong, an other voice will materialize to remedy the first voice is wrong. The answer to wrong speech is more speech. Well, and uh, when you think about, uh, first of all, the, 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 the fundamental notion that the Russians influenced my vote, your vote, or your vote, or anybody's vote, uh, the fact is everybody knew who they were going to vote for pretty close, uh, and so the Russians had little to no effect I on mean, the election. Let's, let's uh, face it, it was <laughs> Russia today before they changed, shortened it to RT. Right. Does anybody know that a, a, a Russian channel is not controlled by the Russians? I mean, we know that CNN is controlled, you know, is pretty much a, a mouthpiece for the Democrats. We know that Fox is pretty much a mouthpiece for the Republicans. Do we not know that RT is a, is a mouthpiece for uh, Russia and that BBC, British Broadcasting Company, is a mouthpiece for, uh, for Britain? I, I think so. Uh, well, and uh, you know, and they're not using bullets. You know, when we overthrow a country, as we do, uh, you know, uh, you know, most recently, uh, uh, the one that comes to mind is uh, is the whole thing around the Crimea, uh, and you know that we had we had the western half of the country, and uh, you know Russia has the eastern half, and and that's with bullets. That, that's not with. Uh, uh, yeah, not, not with just simply alternative ideas. Exactly. <laughs> um, maybe that's why libertarians are starting to actually win races. Uh, there was an election, uh, an off-year election on November 7th, mostly local races, uh, but there were 12 libertarians that won, uh, some in nonpartisan, some in partisan races across the country. So I'd like to read the honor roll of libertarian winners uh, on November 7th. 
Jim Turney is the new Altamont Springs City Commissioner in, uh, in Florida. Greg Perry is the Rome Township Auditor in Pennsylvania. Jennifer Moore is the Auditor of Upper Providence in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. James Fryman is the new Victory Township Supervisor in Venango County, Pennsylvania. Dima Magoras is the Houston Borough Council, uh, Councilman in Washington County, Pennsylvania. Jeffy Galef is the Ex Exeter Township School Director in Berks County, Pennsylvania. Jason Auker was elected to the Spring Township Auditor in Snyder County, Pennsylvania. Zachary Elliott was elected Coconut Grove Village Council in Florida. Kevin Klein, the new Long Beach City Councilman in Washington. Christopher Nance, the Carthage Town Commissioner in North Carolina. Eleanor Russell, Houston Borough Judge of Elections in Pennsylvania. And Jake Town, the Lord Nazareth Auditor and Judge of Elections in Pennsylvania. So congratulations to all of the new Libertarian office holders. And know that the Libertarian Party in 2018 is on a recruitment drive to run 2,000 candidates nationwide in, in, in uh, local and statewide races all over the country. And what struck me about it <clears throat> was uh, how many of them, I think eight of the 12 were from Pennsylvania. Yeah. And Pennsylvania tends to be a swing state, yeah. uh, which is a crucial, you know, so, you know, uh, it, it's, it's happening in an important state when it comes to the 2020 elections. And, and I think to the larger point of um, when people like to you know, speak ill of the libertarians, they say, well, they don't believe in government. Well, they all ran for government. And so it's not a question of libertarians not believing in government at all, but it goes to show a commitment. These are all sort of local positions, city council positions, where you really can't have an effect. Uh, we've certainly seen it here in Sacramento. Uh, and so these are people in positions uh, decision-making positions that will really affect people's lives. And you can see that Pennsylvania has been one of those really volatile states over the last uh, uh, few election cycles because of you know the collapse of the steel mills and all those things. And so that you find that hotbed and you find a change, maybe that where, where other hotbeds exist, you will also begin to see libertarians at local levels start to make and I think it's particularly telling that libertarians are able to win in small local races where the people actually know the people they're voting for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're, and money you're is voting less for good people, the, you know, libertarian label, fine, that's, that's fine. And most people's values are libertarian in most respects. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned, uh, just anecdotally, in talking with the people that I talk to, uh, uh, particularly how many women in this country, with all the thing about Trump, you know, being sort of, you know, the women against Trump and all of that kind of thing, what I'm hearing locally now is, regardless of what you're hearing in polls, is that, you know, women are just sick to death of just having, you know, their, their homes and livelihoods threatened and they get it. And so I think that that real surprise coming in the election is that where I think people think that women are going to mobilize to the Democrats, they aren't. Uh, and I'm seeing more and more what you would call fiscally conservative women. And any, uh, uh, when you start to add that demographic into the libertarian base, because you know libertarians are fiscally conservative, or how you would describe that. And so I think that you're starting to see this whole, uh, whole undertow of particularly women going uh, in the direction of libertarianism. One of the things you read out too in that list was uh, one of the winners was uh, uh, a township school director apparently of Berks County and, and to me that just brightens my day to hear that uh, somebody in the public education system has been elected who's a libertarian because you know any kind of ground we can get towards promoting school choice and ideas of competition that's a, that's a good thing in the system. Um, the uh, big news from a couple of weeks ago was the uh, Another a mass shooting, this time in Texas, at a, at a church in a small town in, in Texas where a, uh, a gunman uh, shot and killed uh, a whole bunch of people. Largest, uh, the largest uh, massacre in Texas since Waco. And uh, the call for gun control, of course, came out, but it was muted. Why? And it was muted because... Well, because it was a person with a gun. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> sure. sure. It, was, it, was a, it was a bystander, somebody yes. outside the church, unfortunately, who saw, you know, heard and saw something, uh, you know, very bad going on and was able to shoot and kill and, uh, and uh, you know, 
shot the guy, wounded him, he took off in his car, and they eventually got, chased him, and he drove into a ditch. And it was a gunman. It was a, a, an armed rifleman, a former NRA a rifle instructor that was able to take down the, the uh, obviously uh, mentally deranged killer of men, women, and children in that small church in Texas. Well, and I think this is part of the bigger issue is if you... When you do have some of these gun control laws, you know, not that uh, all of them are necessarily bad, but when you have them, who are they going to restrict? Essentially, they're going to restrict the law-abiding people. The person who, uh, th this person had apparently broken several laws who actually walked into that church with the gun. and he Including was gun control. Laws. Exactly. Yeah. He was supposed to not he, have access no to guns. There was no way he should have been able to buy a gun with his background. Exactly. So it's like, what do you do? You make a law to say that the other law shall be followed? <laughs> it sort of, sort of gets a little silly. Yeah. And the weapon is, you know, whether we see now that they're using cars as weapons, you know, what's next, biochemical weapons. It's, it's not the weapon itself, but the desire to use a weapon. And it really doesn't matter. In, in England, they have, banned, uh, they have banned guns, and now they have the highest knife. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and, and of course the car, uh, the, the truck uh, killing in New York a few weeks ago. Uh, the, the weapon is immaterial, but the interesting thing about guns as opposed to trucks or 747s flying into skyscrapers is a gun is actually useful as a defensive weapon. A truck, not so much. Or a, a, an airplane, not so much. So if you are a woman, if you are a person who lives in a remote area, if you, if you are you know, willing to learn how to use a firearm and use it defensively, it's something that you can use defensively, whereas other, other uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction cannot be used so. Yeah, and I don't think there was ever any appetite. There really hasn't been any appetite for gun control. I think everybody understands the argument, and even the people that are most um, uh, adamant about being for gun control understand that it has nothing to do with these tragedies, or and it has nothing to do with that. It just has to do with being able to once again kind of put people in a hole, put people in a, in a you know, in a place where they've got to give money to government, basically. You know, it's just another way to control. I think we're out of time here. I can't really tell, but I'm going to say uh, that that's the show for this week. We'll see you again next week on the Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, www.accesssacramento.org, uh, or on the, uh, on the uh, tube at uh, Channel 17 Sacramento, and of course uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Thank you.